we have any questions for our interactive Thursday inshaAllah. And I hope everybody got the book, The Timeless Reality. <laughs> I uh, think for all those people that we go on to Amazon, there's over 48 reviews. I've read through all the reviews, thank all the, the people who wrote the reviews, put pictures on the review and, and went through all that. That is uh, something of uh, uh, great blessings, thank you for doing that, it's not going unnoticed. We know that Amazon also is blocking people from writing reviews. They made a criteria that you have to have it spent $50 in your account before you can write a review. Inside so everything, every turn you go shaitan is, is playing. But the Dajjal book in Sufism that is not even regarding Sufism, they put at the top and every probably blind person, a handicapped person never even had an Amazon account is allowed to write a review. But when it comes to the, these things in the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Shaitan blocks everything but Allah bless those who, who were able to get through and to write it and alhamdulillah it goes down as an eternity for us. That we came onto this earth, we saw the fire of this ignorance and if all that I accomplished in my life was to write a review, alhamdulillah it, it lasts in eternity. Every good action Allah says like even a grain under the, the mustard seed or under a rock is not going to go unnoticed by Allah We pray that Allah take these good actions and, and good blessings and to dress us and bless us from them inshaAllah. So thank you for everyone out there who put the reviews and anyone who is going to put the reviews inshaAllah. Mm. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. What is the reality of sitting on our knees during meditation? <laughs> the reality of sitting on your knees in meditation is pain. <laughs> if you've done it, you know it's reality, it's called pain. So that it keeps you awake and to keep you conscious. Uh, I, th I think in the, the book for the Sufi guides or classical Islam that Mawlana wrote, the life of Shaykh Abdul Faiz al Daghestani before Fajr was 11 cups of black Turkish tea. So that when they pray Fajr not to be in a state of heedlessness and, and sleeping and snoring return every prayer. So they were teaching how to be very conscious in their practices and to be hyper alert in their practices because the energy you know that when energy comes it's going to put the person to sleep. Because the fires is strong, the energy is strong and they're not capable of carrying it, especially if they're tired. Of course they sleep and it just becomes like a sleeping session. If you comfort yourself in meditation then these are the four enemies. The four enemies that come against us from our soul coming together is going to be our nafs, our dunya, our hawa and shaitan. So it means that the desire of the dunya is going to be through our eyes and our dunya desire, that's not going to let our soul to reach its power. And the hawa and hawas depending upon how they're pronouncing is your desires. That how much you want comfort, how much you want ease, how much you want relaxation that makes the person to be lazy and sleepy as a result of you know, dunya coming and giving everything to our dunya desire, our eyes, our hawas and our desires that makes that enemy to be strong and then a, no doubt that the nafs becomes extremely powerful and against any practice for the soul and shaitan is shaitan and the power that shaitan has. As a result people are in four sections and they can't bring these four together to reach their soul's power. You're being split in four directions. That's why all of their teaching is to bring these four together. That your dunya, close your eyes, meditate so that you can spend the time like a grave where you cut off and you don't focus on anything else, close your eyes and feel like a grave. If you can't do that for more than a couple minutes then the dunya is becoming too, too strong. So there has to be a time in which to meditate, contemplate, then that dunya desire will drop down. The hawas and hawa, the desire 
is then when you meditate in an uncomfortable position. So when we were younger the knees because in a knee position you feel the pain and the burning within the legs and you have to go to sujood just to release the blood flow within the leg. So it was a discipline in which to keep yourself disciplined so that you're attentive and awake. And then the practices against the nafs and, and the, the desires and all of those three practices they fight the shaitan inshaAllah. So they have an importance in reducing the bad characteristic and the desires inshaAllah. As Salaamu Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah How to get rid of satanic attacks during meditation, something enters from head inside and the scene disappears, please help. The scene disappears or, or the scenery disappears? <clears throat> yeah, satanic attack, again everything else that uh, make sure that we have wudu, make sure that we have the taweez, make sure that the taweezes are in the house, the, the shaitan shouldn't be getting so close. And then the purpose of the meditation is to build that energy so that means to keep uh, seeing the faiz of the shaykh in front of us, making the rabita and the connection, reading the madad of all the awliya to be present in the room before we start anything. So that becomes our, our foundation for everything we're going to do. So that when we're reciting that and the room that we're meditating in has an energy in it is playing Dalal Khirat, playing Qur'an, Surat Al-Baqarah, playing all of these blessings and that room is it becomes like a sanctified space which is filled with angels and filled with lights and filled with good fragrances and then when we enter in there to build our energy then make the connection with the shaykhs asking for their madad and support and that shouldn't be an issue of uh, shaitan trying to get anywhere close to you. The rest is just going to be the shaitan already inside of you that doesn't want to come out. That becomes the cleansing, some easier than others depending upon how long he's been inside and how in, embedded within the person those shaitans are and how they don't want to come out. But the meditation and keep making the rabita, keep asking for the connection and connect your heart with Shaykh Nazim, Shaykh Abdul Faizid Dagestani and ask for their light to enter into your heart and that your eyes to be meeting with their eyes and inshaAllah keep the practices inshaAllah and all the system that been put together inshaAllah and, and get the book. The book is like an encyclopedia of two and a half years of questions and I'm sure these questions are in the book. So that you go to that section, you read it like a like encyclopedia that you want to know about a subject, you go to table of contents, read it and then you can put it down and put it into practice and you keep it as always a reference in your meditation area that you just read a, a section from the table of contents that you're interested in, the, the jinn, the energy, the making the muraqabah, making the rabita and then you do that practice and it's always there for you. If you couldn't find somebody to ask at that time at least that, that, that encyclopedia or that reference is there inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Is it okay to have the beloved shaykh's pictures in the room and please help me understand how should we behave when we are around these images? Yeah, keeping the shaykh's pictures in the room, we have articles on that on the, the website and to, to keep yourself with the respect and ihtiram in front of their pictures with the, with the respect like everything else that we do. And when you look at the picture it reminds you of your practices of who you are, what you're trying to accomplish. So it's, it's important to have in our lives. In places that you're not appropriately dressed then I wouldn't put a picture there because you don't have the ability to, to keep yourself uh, in, in a correct attire. So you put it in the areas where are respectable areas, you put it near your computer, you put it near your TV room, things that you know shaitan is going to play with you in those areas 
you want the shaykh's pictures there so that when you're watching something inappropriate you look at the shaykh's and hopefully you, you think of something more appropriate. Or same thing for online and the, the computers and screensavers and all of these things because just writing the word Allah doesn't bring that to many people's minds. The reason because the souls of the shaykhs are alive, their soul is alive. When you look to their face you feel the fires in the presence of their souls and that's what Allah wants for us is that, كُنُوا مَا صَادِقِينَ اِتَّقُوا اللَّهِ Have a consciousness of Allah and كُنُوا مَا صَادِقِينَ Keep the company of the pious. Now Allah doesn't care for dunya so He's not saying you have to follow them on the street everywhere they go because that's not going to be possible for many. So for those whom are training in the world of life Allah is talking to them that you should always be with the sadiqeen, keep them always with you, keep them in your mind's eye, keep them in your physical eye's vicinity and that way you train yourself how to keep their presence always with us inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Can you please explain the reality of yawning? Once one person yawns everyone begins to yawn. Yes, yeah, it's, it's very contagious and uh, these are energies that, that want to enter into the body. So they come under and they put an energy here and they jump into the body. And as soon as they come like that then everybody else is also being touched and they're jumping in. So that's the, the adab of the yawning is to try to cover one's mouth when you feel that's going to come so that they're not coming into the mouth. And then <laughs> there's the expression of they, they and then try to use your siwak so that nothing entered into the mouth making salawats inshaAllah. But these are energies that are always trying to enter into insan. Mm. As Salaamu dear Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah I made a bayah with a murshid but I'm attracted to the Naqshbandi path shaykhs. What should I do? I don't like breaking my bayah promise, I am stuck, mm. please guide me. Yeah it's a d difficulty that you, 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 you've entered into an agreement, I don't know how active that guide is and how active is your, your initiation with them and how how often are you with them, that's something that you have to try to maneuver. If you feel that you know that was somebody that you don't feel your heart is connected to and, and they're not somebody continuously teaching you, guiding you and, and you feel a continuous connection then you have to sort of excuse yourself from that relationship and, and try to reconnect with an Naqshbandi tariqah if, if that's your heart's calling. But you have to be careful that you know not to take from too many people. Some people want to actually sit with another person and learn from another person and, and that can be dangerous among shaykhs so that you lose the connection to everything because of the disloyalty. So everyone knows their own personal situation and some people take bayat in a big audience of 5,000 people they never saw that person again, they came, they left and that was it. Yeah, no, that this is more about building relationship, communicating, feeling the connection, practicing. At that time then that becomes a big no-no to start switching around. But if you didn't do all of those things and you made no connection but you just sort of waved your hand at a big event, I wouldn't consider that to be an issue. But then the one you're study with and you're actually now involved with and making the connection with. Then alhamdulillah that's the, that's the real bayat, the one that you're able to make a connection with, learn from and to reach to the love of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh Ya Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. What can we do if we find jealousy from others affecting us? Yeah, the jealousy from others is, is to keep maybe a lower profile, that's the whole difficulty I think we've talked about for many years, it's just people are jealous. If you're doing something everyone's jealous, the ones who don't do anything of course they're jealous because you're doing something. 
and the person who is jealous is not doing anything. So jealousy is, is something that you try to keep a low, lower profile to people so that you're not the cause of the jealousy. And if it's just the good actions that you're doing in the way of Allah then Allah is the best of those to defend. And He defends those servants that they're doing good, they go about doing their good and people are going to just talk bad. That's just the nature of people because those are the ones who don't do anything, they talk bad about everything. So. It's just, a, it's just a way of life, just make sure that we're not causing the jealousy, flaunting all new things that we have and somebody doesn't have that. That's why the tariqah comes and teaches, you know, don't show that to people. You know, if, if you're going with people that don't have then don't be the time to show everything and don't be the cause of the jealousy. But if it's in the deen and our practices and the light that you begin to, to emanate and the, the reality and the dress that the servant begins to have, then it'll be given that people will become jealous and begin to talk bad and back mouth. And that's why then the good character is not to say anything and to keep with the practices and not to be distracted by anything that's just barking at us. We keep our path and keep going inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa In meditation my body is not numb but I can't feel my hands. My heart mm. moving to backside ribs, uh, three heart movement pattern feels different, forgive me. Yeah, that's okay as long as you're not dead, just keep going. <laughs> Said, what don't kill you, make you stronger. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about anything, don't be distracted about your health and counting pulse and all this. You're too observant. So just make the connection, don't worry about numbness, feel a tightness of energy is going to come and just keep working through that and make the connection, focus on the connection. Don't be too worried, people get a fear also, they feel the energy coming, they feel their, their heart tightening, they get scared because the practices are real, the energies are real. So you just sort of keep your connection and if Allah wants you then it's okay, Allah is going to take you. If Allah doesn't want you then don't worry, He's not coming to take you. So just keep with the practices inshaAllah making the connection, breathing through the energy and make sure that you have wudu and that you're… you're in a position that uh, you, you can maintain inshaAllah like on your knees or if your knees are not good then in a meditative position inshaAllah. Uh, As Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Do we meet eye to eye with the shaykh during muraqabah or do we look down on the jubba focusing on the heart? Yeah, you, you look down that you visualize the shaykh is in front of you and their fires is coming down if they want to present their face to dress you. But to say that I'm looking eye to eye to them is not a good manner. Even when you see the shaykh in physical life, shouldn't stare at his face because you send bad energy and the adab was always just to look down, to look down. When you look down it shows a sign of humility. <clears throat> Then when you meditate it's the same because they're training for the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad So that holy presence then most definitely everyone looking down. They don't dare to raise their head in that presence, they're, they're not of any… The, the, the status is too high for that reality. So this is a training which just to keep a humble path through the physicality. If their soul looks at you and your soul looks at them, it's already looking face to face. So the f raising of the physical face is of no importance and, and it's not a good sign of manners. So when we're with them physically, I don't need to look in his eyes for him to make eye contact with me, there's nothing going to happen that way. But when I look down, his soul can look right into my soul. And that's where the connection is coming. It's not his physical eyes and you lock onto his eyes and it's his… the soul of the shaykh, that's what's important. But when you do the physical, you, what you can be doing is actually sending all your bad energy and make the shaykh sick or you know to have a heaviness because of what we carry of negativities. So when we look down then we are keeping that negativity down. But when they want to keep their nazar it's not the physical, 
So their soul comes out, their soul makes a nazar and it sees your soul right, right away. It doesn't need your head, it doesn't need your eyes to make the connection. It's a light to light connection onto the souls. That's why then we discipline our physicality and down. Same with the presence of awliya, same with the presence of Prophet Then when we're in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad it's to look down. And I have the qadajis, a ta'if, a miskeen, a zalim, a jahal and I don't want to put my dirtiness upon you and nothing. The nazar and the soul of Prophet immediately look into your soul and every dress will come. So it's all a conditioning and training to lower the, the dirtiness of the physicality inshaAllah. Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Will we know when the Dajjal emerges in this world, how do we best prepare to protect ourselves and our families? Definitely, you will definitely know. His emergence is already everywhere, that's why you're being forced to be shot, inoculated and vaccined and all these things that you, you see no understanding of why you need to do it and somebody's telling you just do it, that's his system. So already you can feel the nervousness of his, his, his kingdom and his government. So that's, that's the inconvenience and, and nothing makes sense in the mentality and uh, that's the system. It becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. And the fitna is, is, is very apparent. So in the last two years if you didn't see that as a sign then the, that the whole world changed, the whole world saw it. So it's, it's everywhere now. Every day it's being implemented a different rule. Can't step here, can't go there, put this in and this is going to cause a heart problem, put this in, going to cause nerve problem, put this in, going to cause this problem. That's why the shaykhs are not making any discussions on, on do this or do that because they don't want to carry anything like that because of it's… it's a, these are not solutions for anyone's health, these are forced inoculations. So this is not a solution, this is not the hadith that, that Allah is the cure for every sickness, this is not a cure for any sickness. This is a forced inoculation, this is nothing to do with a, a remedy of any sickness. There's no hadith for this, this is just azab. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam We are starting to pick up emotions and energies of people who we talk to. How can yes. we protect ourselves from depressive energies and emotions of nervousness coming from a person? Yeah, those are all the energy practices, get the book please. <laughs> That wash, keep your taweez, keep your, your madad, keep your connection and interact. This, this process is not for us to run in a closet and hide, just keep the practices. It's a good sign that your heart is alive and you're actually beginning to feel all of these things. Then you'll learn how to protect yourself, keep yourself clean and then sort of be careful where you're going and who you're going to see in life. We become very selective because the energy and what you're going to have to carry from that energy so then you live your life more cautious, more selective that where you're going to take yourself and what's the purpose of taking yourself there. Is it a higher association or lower association? If it's an association for zikr it's a higher association, okay I should be going there because then I can take the blessings of it. Uh, going to a lower association uh, then most likely I'm going to take the burden of it. So always ask yourself wherever you're going in life is it higher or lower? If it's lower and you have to because it's family then you know you do what you gotta do, you do your madad, you keep your zikr going and all they want you to carry something you carry it. But alhamdulillah all of this is a sign that these energies and the heart is coming alive inshaAllah. Good, Subhana Rabbika Rabbal Izzat Amma Yasifu. Wa salaamun al mursaleen, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri surat al-Fatiha.